Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. I am your Leading with Strength and Grace podcast host, CEO of Atard Leadership Academy, and leadership strategist, Deneen Atard. The Leading with Strength and Grace podcast is for ambitious women who are eager to learn how to lead teams, champion change, and gain influence in the workspace they occupy. Each episode gives listeners the inside scoop they want and need to level up their leadership skills. This podcast is designed for fabulous leaders like you. Let's get started. Deneen brings a wealth of experience, knowledge, and inspiration to Atari Leadership Academy clients by incorporating a growth mindset and positive psychology techniques into each client's customized professional development strategy. She holds master degree in leadership, multiple leadership and digital entrepreneurship certifications, along with advanced graduate learning studies in human resource management. Deneen is also the author of Leading with Strength and Grace. Without further ado, Deneen, yay, we're so happy to have you. Hello. It is a pleasure to be here. First of all, I want to extend a warm thank you to the American Business Women Association's Orange Park chapter. Thank you so very much. I know that you protect your members and that you uh, weed out people. And it's an honor to be able to make the cut to be able to present to your women. Denise mentioned my bio and people always laugh when I say I'm a lover of chocolate. I will not lie to you. Chocolate comes before everything in my life. I love chocolate. (laughs) And so I am passionate about chocolate. I am passionate also about helping women. One is because I think so many times we're feel as though we're alone and we're taking this journey by ourselves. And sometimes we struggle with sharing with one another about what's going on and the challenges that we have because we're so, okay, let me just talk about me. Maybe it's not you. We're so adamant about being superwoman and we're going to be powerful and we're going to stand strong and we're not going to let anything affect us. But the reality is it does. So one of my missions is to support and help women in any way that I can to further their cause. And an example of that is the Leading with Strength and Grace podcast. I use that platform to allow women who are also passionate about any subject that deals with leadership and wellness to come on and to share their information for 20 minutes with the audience, asking questions and having a dialogue. So that's one way that I support women. Another way that I support women is through LinkedIn. I'm a firm believer that if you are connected to individuals on LinkedIn, support what they're doing. If it resonates with you and they have something positive to say, use that platform to promote women. Also, I want to, before we move into our subject tonight, and tonight we're gonna be talking about improving your soft skills so that you can excel in leadership. I want to invite you, Denise is going to add a link in the comment section, and it's called Milkshake. Milkshake has links to all of my social media platforms. It also has a link if you're interested in being notified before a Leading with Strength and Grace book reaches uh, the public. Please feel free to sign up for that, as well as there's some additional information available to you so that we can connect. All of the housekeeping is out of the way. What I'm going to ask you to do, whether your cameras are on or off, shake it off because everybody has had a day where they've done a lot of things. Oh, I like it. I see somebody stretching their neck. Shake off your day. Let it loose. Come on. I'm, I like participation. Shake it off. There you go. Shake it off. And then I want you to take a deep breath. This time is for you. It's not about anyone else. It's about you nurturing yourself, learning about leadership. And if you're thinking, well, Danina, I'm already good at leadership. I know everything that I need to know. I'm going to challenge you to say, great, but listen for the person you work with that doesn't know, for that person that's yearning to have a mentor. Three things. No, I'm sorry. Four things I want you to do this evening. Participate is number one. Participate is number two. And can we guess what number three is? Participate. Okay. And the fourth one is take 
take notes. So participate, take notes. And the reason I'm asking you to participate is because I want this to be an open dialogue between us. I have been in lecture classes where the instructor goes monologue for 45 minutes to an hour. And what happens? We go, I don't want that to happen. I want your input. I want open dialogue. And also keep in mind by you participating, you're empowering not only yourself, but you're also empowering the woman that is listening to you because we all learn from each other's experiences. With that being said, as you're taking notes, I want you to label it. Mindset, communication, confidence. Those are the three things that we're going to talk about today. Mindset, communication, and confidence. The interesting thing about soft skills, excuse me, and the one thing that I truly love when I was doing my research on soft skills, corn and fairy, K-O-R-N-F-E-R-R-Y, did a research study 2016. And I'm gonna read it to you so I don't misquote. Their research shows that not only have women excelled in the 12 key areas of emotional and social intelligence, which include soft skills, but they have also learned how to leverage their skills. So ladies, that means that we have an innate ability to not only maximize our soft skills, but we can also leverage them to experience the success that we so truly desire. So when we talk about soft skills, nod your head if you have a, have a general idea of what soft skills is, okay? Just to make sure we're on a level playing field, soft skills revolve around those non-technical skills. I've heard a recruiter once say that the technical experience will get you the interview. The soft skills will get you to retain the job. So they're very important. So when we talk about soft skills, we're talking about that non-technical skills regarding how we interact with others. So rather that be that interpersonal communication skills, our people skills, or our personality traits. Care to list off at least one example of a soft skill? I would say it's something common every day. It's called common courtesy <laughs> or just, just being respectful to someone. I like that. That is a good one. I think that also goes in under the area of communication, being able to um, be trustworthy, being able to be authentic. What's another soft skill? I'm just going to say good listener. Good listener. I like that. Was that Phyllis? Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. And I saw someone else that looked like they were going to talk to me. Emily. I Listening, I like what Phyllis said, but also empathy. Empathy. That's a very good yeah, thing. That's a part, it rolls into emotional intelligence too. What's another example of a soft skill? Collaboration. And so you, we've mentioned off listening, collaboration, empathy. And eye contact. Eye contact. Can you, can someone tell me, listening to all of these things, can you see how important they are as a leader? We've all had the boss from you know where. At, at some point in our career that failed every attempt at soft skills. Am I correct? Or am I just the only one that ran into a couple of bad supervisors? And it makes it a stressful environment because anytime you're communicating with someone, whether it be a personal or professional relationship, and they are lacking in soft skills, it's an awkward, a very tiring interaction with that person. So imagine, I know on this call, we have leaders that are working within organizations, and then we have women who are head of their own organization. And whether or not you lead a team of one or you lead a team of 1,000, soft skills are very important. I wanna add some other soft skills. Mindset, that's a very important soft skill. We're gonna talk a little bit about mindset shortly. The next one, teamwork. Then, of course, you mentioned communication, problem solving. Problem solving is very important when you're working with a team and you're developing your leadership skills. Work ethic, because we all know we've run across some people that they will, they will skate through all responsibilities. And if you volunteer to take on the load every time, they will let you. So you want to make sure that work ethic. And then the next one is adaptability. 
We've all been faced here recently with adaptability. Because of the environment we find ourselves in because of COVID-19, many organizations that had brick and mortar institutions where they went face to face with organizations, they were now, they are now faced with being online. And they've had to rearrange their entire way of doing business. Those that are able to adapt to change quickly, they are still sailing high. Those that are struggling, they are just that, they are struggling. Another form of a soft skill, which we're talking about tonight, is confidence. Confidence is so key. And I will venture to say, don't tell anybody. Fake it until you make it. That is the one area that I will wholeheartedly say, fake it until you feel it. And we're going to talk later on about some ways that you can actually develop your confidence. And then, of course, interpersonal communication skills is also a form of soft skills. I want to share a story with you, and I want to see if it resonates with anyone listening. I had already obtained my bachelor's degree. I had already obtained my master's degree, and I had some additional training. I was the regional sales manager for a telecommunications company, had 42 managers reporting to me, 110 sales associates up under them, and we're sitting in a very important meeting. I am a regional sales manager. My peers are there. CEO of the company is there. I'm the only African-American there. There are two other Caucasian women and the rest of the room are all men. And I wish I could say that I was confident. I wish I could say that I had the right mindset. I wish I could say that I was an effective communicator at the time, but I wasn't. As I sat there looking around the room, you want to know the thoughts that were running through my mind? First off, did they invite me by mistake? I don't feel like I belong here. The second one was, I have no value to add. Everyone's smart in the room. What more could I possibly provide? And the last thought that was running across my mind as they were going around the table asking for input was, God, please don't let them ask me a question. I was terrified. Might I remind you, I'm leading a team very successfully, but I learned how to put on that facade so that people would think that I knew what I was doing and I knew just enough to get everyone motivated, to get everyone engaged, but that only went so far. Let me tell you how that meeting ended. That was my mode of operation for several meetings. My boss, Chuck, phenomenal leader and a phenomenal mentor. I use some of the techniques today that he taught me. He brought me into his office and he said, Deneen, he said, what's going on? I said, what do you mean, what's going on? He says, you have been silent every meeting that we've ever held. He says, and you're not the person that you present when we have a one-on-one. -on -one. You talk to me about your ideas. You have your plan formulated. You articulate everything so well, and your team is on top. You are winning in all of the areas of performance. But when you get inside that boardroom, it's like another person takes over. It hurt. I knew it was true, but it hurt. He says, I'm gonna challenge you. I am going to be your champion. I said, okay, what does that entail? He says, the next time we have a meeting, I'm going to start the conversation sharing what you've done. And then I want you to step in and explain it and elaborate on it. I'm telling you now, be prepared because it's going to happen. I walked out of his office deflated because my mindset wasn't where it needed to be. We'll talk about growth mindset and fixed mindset shortly. My confidence level when it came to presenting to people whom I thought knew more than me was very low. And while I could communicate, I chose to be an introvert, but it didn't serve me because those that I led could see straight through me. Those in upper management, which is the level that I wanted to ascend to, could see that I wasn't confident. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why I chose these three areas. Is there anyone else listening that this story resonates with you at any point sometime in your career? 
if you would share, because I did the hard part, I shared an embarrassing moment. And I know that many of you raised your hand and said that you have experienced that. Can you share briefly, just one person if you'd like, what was the turning point for you? Yeah, um, okay, so I've always been an introverted person. And I had a twin, identical twin who was very extroverted. And so I grew up kind of like purposely in her shadow. Um, and it started with going to college and trying to say that I can't keep doing this with my life and I need to start slowly getting to learn how to be extroverted. And it was a very slow process because it's not my natural inclination. Um, the turning point for me, I mean, it went through even when I went through grad school and I did a JD MBA. Um, the turning point for me was into my law practice, you know, having to go into a courtroom, which I didn't want to do litigation at the time, shaking, doing an uncontested hearing in front of the judge because it was my very first time and having the client tell me, you did great. And so, you know, from that point, you know, I end up getting married and I moved and I purposely made myself that changed my practice to something that I was not comfortable with and changed to litigation to learn the skills that I needed, knowing that it was going to make me gain skills that I didn't have and be on a more levy, level or better playing field among my peers with the skills that I would have gained doing something that I was completely uncomfortable doing. Thank you so very much for sharing. And actually, you touched on some of the uh, suggestions that we're going to talk about. Number one, you talked about getting out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself. And that's a part of gaining confidence. And we'll talk about that later on. OK, April. I think for me, and it's, I still struggle with it. I'll be 100 percent honest. But, you know, for all your life, I don't know if anyone struggled with this, but they're like, oh, you're so great. You have such great potential. That word just, if I hear someone say I have great potential again, I feel like I want to strangle. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I have this great potential and then I, I don't feel like I'm, and I don't know if that's the same kind of thing, but I'm not performing at the level that I should be. So they're literally telling me like, you have great potential, but on a, what they call a little shade, but you're not operating there because you have potential. And so I would always, I struggle with that myself. Like, well, I should be operating at a, a different level, obviously. So that whole potential thing makes me question myself a lot of times. And so when I was introduced into the industry that I'm currently in for many years, it has taken me 20 years to literally enter this industry all of my life from graduating college, the first time they said, you should be in this business. You have such great potential. And it took me 20 years to realize that, okay, I have great potential and quit and a job and start my own. So, you know, that is, I guess my, has been my struggle is how do you, how do you deal with some of that? So I still struggle with that because of the industry I'm in is, um, is male dominated. And so men are very, very good with numbers. I was just on the phone with a fellow advisor in another state. And he's like, yeah, you know, you just take this and da -da, and it, they'll have $127,000. And I don't operate that quickly. I have to sit back and do my numbers on my own. And, and But they're very quick with it. So I feel very intimidated and not knowledgeable um, in the way that he does. Although I'll come to the same results maybe a day later, <laughs> but not as quickly. So I do struggle in, in that area. Of, I'm not, I'm a calculator is my best friend. Thank you for sharing. I greatly appreciate it. And we're going to talk about mindset shortly. And we're going to talk about something called neuroplasticity, which is very instrumental for us shifting the way we view things. And as you were sharing that story, I remembered when I was in high school, I hated algebra. I said, I don't want, I don't like math because I had the misconceived notion that I wasn't good at it because I was a girl and that it wasn't expected of me. I had the wrong mindset. Now this is the light bulb went off. My mother hired a tutor. I went to the tutor. The tutor said, there's nothing wrong with you. You know math. 
Every problem he gave me, I would whiz through it. I still hate math, but it was my mindset that was blocking me from performing. So I'm going to challenge you and we're going to talk about, again, neuroplasticity and we're going to talk about challenging your thoughts and what you believe about who you are. I tell it to students and I tell it to uh, clients all of the time. As you shared, one thing that came to mind was how important it is for us to master these soft skills. Because if we don't have the confidence to stand up, express our ideas, and go for what we want, we'll still be sitting on the sidelines waiting for permission to step forward. We'll still be waiting for someone to give us that leadership position because we're waiting. So I am going to challenge all of us to realize that arriving is a process. This doesn't happen overnight. I will tell you that there are days that I get up, I second guess what I know when I'm asked to speak to someone. I also get nervous when I'm presenting, especially on a topic that I know that I know and you would think I would be comfortable before we started tonight. I had a bad case of nerves, but I started to practicing what I've started to practicing a long time ago and that's positive self-talk. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I want to share with you the reason why this is so important. Listen to these benefits of mastering soft skills. Number one, it teaches you how to self lead. And that is vital because the first person you are going to learn how to lead effectively should be you. Because if you can't lead yourself through your career, through your life, how can you expect to lead a team of two, three, four, a hundred or a thousand? Leadership starts with self-leadership. Another reason why you want to master the soft skills is because it increases your ability to be a critical thinker. It also enhances your ability to adapt. It also opens you up to career advancement. And for those of you who are operating in your own business, it opens you up to being a better networker. And this organization is all about networking. If you can't articulate your desires or the purpose of your business with confidence, with the right mindset, who are you going to convince to buy your products? Because they're gonna be thinking, well, she's not that confident. I don't know whether or not she can do her job. So that's another reason why. Denise, did you have something you'd like to add? I did. So that that comment you just made is so relevant um, when you made the comment about, you know, if you're not confident in your business, how do you expect anyone else to, you know, to buy from you or be confident in it as well? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I speak to a lot of small business owners, <clears throat> especially ones that are starting up their business. And when they come in and they ask for, for money, this is how important confidence is and kind of with your topic. When they come in and ask for money or to borrow money for whatever their projects are or to get their business established, one of the first things I ask is, do you have a plan? And let's talk about your business plan. You know, how are you going to get your customers? How are you going to promote your business? All these other things. And then um, the next thing I ask is, what stake do you have in it? How much money are you willing to contribute to it? And then I get sometimes this blank stare where they'll say to me that, um, you guys can't finance 100%. Why do I have to put anything down? And I use that same line you just used is that if you can't put a stake in your own business, how do you expect us to do it? That is so true. Well, we talked about soft skills. We talked about the benefit of them. And now we're going to roll into the first one that we spoke about, mindset. How many of you are familiar with Carol Dweck, Dr. Carol Dweck? She wrote a book, Uh, Mindset, the New Psychology. Her original study was centered around uh, students in education. It centered around children in educational environment and it expanded uh, to the business environment. And Dr. Carol Dweck coined two phrases, uh, growth mindset and fixed mindset. And the titles of each kind of give you an idea of what they are. But the fixed mindset is of the belief that your talents and your skills are set. There's no way to enhance, grow, or develop. When you are faced with a challenge, if you have a fixed mindset, you go into that, woe is me. I always have bad luck. Nothing ever turns out right for me. I'm not going to get any better than I currently am. 
However, on the flip side, if you have a growth mindset, it speaks to exactly what it is. A person with a growth, growth mindset looks at challenges as an opportunity to learn, to develop. They also look at it as if they're faced with something that's hard. They says, you know what? I've had success before in the past in a different area. Let's see how that success can help me for correlate into success in this area. They're open-minded. They are considering all options and they are very successful because they're adapting to change. They're gathering information from every resource and growth mindset people are their own cheerleader. And sometimes we know in environments you have to be your own cheerleader because there's no one rooting you on. There's no one at times, or should I say, you feel as though there's no one. And so being able to have that growth mindset and to be able to champion your own cause when there's no one standing next to you is crucial. One thing I want to talk about, because there's probably somebody sitting there and they says, Ooh, you touched a nerve when you said fix the mindset. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or say anything. You're thinking, hmm, I got a little bit of that. Or maybe you'll say, my business partner has a fixed mindset. My husband has a fixed mindset. Of course, you're going to blame everyone else. And you're thinking, what can I do? And the great news about if you find yourself with a fixed mindset is that you can transition, you can grow, you can move to a growth mindset. There's this wonderful thing. And when I found out about it, it excited me. It's called neuroplasticity. I'm not a doctor, not a psychologist. We have one on this call though, but I'm not, so I won't go in too depth about what it is, but neuroplasticity in the basic terms means that we have the ability to reprogram our thoughts, to retrain our brain. And of course, when you're retraining or training specifically, it requires repetition over and over, being cognizant of the thoughts that you're having, of the behavior, and then interjecting and starting over from a positive perspective. So when it comes back to April, you were talking about your viewpoint, and I'm going to use you if you don't mind. We were talking about numbers. <laughs> it's just like, wait a minute, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be the example. <laughs> So when we're talking about numbers, which I share the same thing, I started to change in my dialogue about how I felt about numbers. And instead of saying it takes me a little bit longer, I switched it to I get faster and faster every time I'm presented with a problem regarding math. Did I feel it when I first said it? Of course not. I was still struggling, but I started to rethinking the way I thought about different problems. I do it today when I'm facing challenges. I have these cards, right? I, I don't know if anyone's read the book, Think or Grow Rich, right? But I have these cards and these are my confessions. I say them in the morning. I say them before I go to bed. I read them and I've had to update them and change them because I've said things so long that I'm like, oh, it's already done. I'm already doing it. I already feel it. So you're absolutely correct. I'm sorry for interjecting. But no, I, just... I want this to be a two-way dialogue. And what you're practicing is the use of affirmations. And research has shown that when we use affirmations, there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind. Number one is that we want to speak of what we do want to experience and not what we don't want to happen. We always want to speak of it in the present tense and not in the future tense. So those are things that I'm quite sure you already know that, but I just wanted to uh, touch base on that because affirmations are powerful. People think, oh, I'm just going through the motions. One thing I will tell you when you're using affirmations is to be present in the moment. And by that, I mean, if you have, for me, I have like three affirmations that I focus on in the morning and I will look at those affirmations and I will see myself in that spot, in that moment. I take note and I know I'm going to go, some people are like, oh, she's going to go, Ooh, but I'm going to tell you anyway, I will experience myself experiencing what I am saying. And I listen to the words that I say. And in key thing, we are our most influential person in our lives. We believe what we say about us. It's our choice what we say about us. Most oftentimes it's negative. And we're, we take that in, that internal dialogue. And I wanna challenge you, if that's an issue, start, jo start journaling about what's going on in your internal dialogue so you can see what you're thinking about. 
Now, we're going to go back to how to transition from a growth, a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Number one, start to view your challenges as opportunities. Number two, cultivate a sense of purpose. Identify why you're doing what you're doing. Then you can have your own buy-in on what you need to get accomplished. The next one, embrace your authenticity. Stop trying to be like the lady that sits to your left, the lady that sits to your right, the one that you watch on TV. Embrace who you are. Because we try so hard and we look at other people and we see their success, but we don't know their journey. So what they do is not going to work for us. I want, I am on social media and there's a young lady who is out of, well, she was originally out of California and her position was she produced Real-time TV shows that everyone would know if you mentioned it. She worked with producers, executives, actors all across the country. Phenomenal career. Through it all, she never relinquished her authenticity. And what she showed up in was leopard leggings, a sequence jacket, and these big phenomenal glasses. And when she spoke... She always had joy. They would say, oh, take it down. She said, no, this is who I am. I I'm going to show up who I am. Some of us, myself included, if somebody told me I needed to temper it down, I would have tempered it down in the day. But she was authentic to who she was, showed up every day. And if you Googled on um, Facebook, you'll find her. I'm not going to mention her name, but she's a phenomenal, talented woman. She is a true example of what it means to embrace your authenticity. She makes no apologies for who she is. And that's what we need to do as women in the workplace. Make no apologies for who we are. Make no apologies for the degrees we have attained. Make no apologies for the success we've had in our businesses, because it is a place that we have worked hard to reach. We talked about mindset. Let's shift to talk about confidence. If and Denise touched on it, so I'm not going to elaborate. When you have a lack of confidence, you show up differently in the workplace. Number one, it starts with body language. Have you ever seen people in, you know, they talk to you? And what would you think if I showed up here to talk to you and I did that? You said, oh man, VP Denise, she has made a bad decision. No. <laughs> it is important that we show up. That means being bold even when our knees are shaking. That means shoulders back, occupying the space in which you are present in, even in a fearful state. Because again, I told you, confidence is the one thing I will tell you, it's okay to fake it until you make it. If you are a leader leading a team and you are not confident, it will create havoc for you because your team will not feel secure. And we all know that, in, that people that are not secure in their environment, they're in protection mode, survival mode. They're not really focusing on giving you 100% because they're not exactly sure what's coming next. But when they have a leader who is very confident, who is bold and articulate and operates in integrity, your team will do just about anything to make sure that you all succeed. We talked about looking on the inside when it comes to uh, confidence. We talked about looking on the outside. The next thing I want to talk to you about is confidence in action. You're saying, okay, if I get my confidence together, I get my mindset together, what does that look like? This is what confidence looks like. Your boss walks into your office and says, here, here's a project. You have no idea about the foundation of the project and it's a little bit out of your area. When you operate from a standpoint of confidence, you take on that responsibility. You learn the tasks that you need to learn. You expand your knowledge base. You bring in other people to collaborate because you're smart enough to know that you can't do it on your own. And you expand when you operate from a point of confidence. Another example of what confidence looks like, you're on a project. You've got one person that never carries their weight. But instead of letting it slide over and over and over again, you schedule a meeting, you sit down and you speak with the individual, talk about what's going on, the expectations, how it's impacting team performance. That's how you show up with confidence. Any questions, any insight? Girl, you dropping some knowledge here. This is good, this is good. 
Thanks for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to implement what you learned and share your outcomes on our Facebook page at Deneen Attard Leadership Strategist. And for more information on leadership and strategies, visit us at www.deneenattard.com.